Let us say, Amen for the word of God for us. Jesus is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us say, Praise the Lord. Give him praise. Amen. Let us say, Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our lesson focus today is about miracle faith in Jesus, the anointed Christ, and Son of God. Jesus began his ministry as a rabbi, at the required age of 30 years old, he was scorned, ridiculed, dejected, rejected, unbelieved, and almost murdered by the elders in his home township of Nazareth, because he claimed to be the Messiah. Because of the resulting abrasive behavior toward him, Jesus, the oldest son, and now head of the family, relocated with his mother and younger siblings to the fishing village of Capernaum. Capernaum was located on the shores of the inland Sea of Galilee, which was a body of water fed downstream by the mighty Jordan River. Seven miracles that Jesus performed along the shores and hills overlooking the Sea of Galilee are recorded in the four Gospels. The first miracle was in the hills of Cana, where Jesus turned water into wine at the wedding at Cana. Jesus, Peter, Andrew, Philip, Nathaniel, James, and the beloved John were summoned on the third day of a wedding feast, by Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was serving perhaps as a food steward for the ruler at the wedding, or in some other official capacity, governed by the wedding official, on the third day of the wedding feast. We can summarize from John 2.12 that Mary's other sons were also in attendance at the wedding feast, perhaps assisting their mother Mary in some kind of capacity. John 2, 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. John 2, 2. And both Jesus was called, and his disciples, to the marriage. If Mary was indeed micromanaging the foods, and drinks, served at the wedding banquet, she would have been well aware of any potential shortages, and sent someone with the capacity to obtain more food, and or drinks so that the groom would not be publicly embarrassed, at his own wedding banquet, because the wedding planner failed to plan well, or because of a shortage of funds, could not afford to purchase enough supplies. Whatever the case was, we can see that Mary in her capacity called for the helping hands, of her oldest son, and the six other disciples that called him teacher. John 2, 3. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. A Jewish wedding feast is a memorable special occasion and a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence for many Jewish men and women of the seed of Abraham and could go on and on for days. It was a joyous occasion and a way of escaping the realism of Roman oppression of the Jewish people. When more and more unexpected numbers of guests showed up to attend the festive activities, the water pots for purification ran dry and had to be refilled and the wine ran out, and Mary became more authoritative and intense. This is the first key learning point of our lesson today. We need to know what to do in stressful times such as these. Like Mary, we should have Jesus the Christ by our side, in our heart, talking with us, instructing us, opening closed doors, and shutting open doors that we should not go through, and most of all, giving us the compassion, love, security, and tolerance that we need to go through stressful times with the comforting spirit of God speaking peace to our hearts as we daily walk with him within us. John 2, 4 Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Jesus scolded his mother because she knew the prophecy concerning her son's death, recorded in Luke chapter 2, verses 34 and 35. And when Jesus came to his hour, he declared it in John 12, 27. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. We did not hear, or read in John 2, 3, where Mary asked Jesus to furnish more wine, nor did we read, or hear Mary go off under stress on her son Jesus, demanding that he get for her more wine, somehow. Mary did not try to exert any authority over her son Jesus, the Christ, and Son of God, she simply said. They have no wine. Four words equivalent to. I need thee, O Lord, I need thee, every day, I need thee, O Lord my Savior, come see about me, I need thee, O Lord, today help me Lord, 
Help us, Lord, today we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Mary knew that her son Jesus, the Messiah, knew her heart's desires, and would answer her heart's unspoken whispers of prayer for his help somehow, because that is who Jesus is, and that is how Jesus works for the good of those that love him. Mary loved Jesus. Mary trusted Jesus. Mary relied upon Jesus. Mary had faith in Jesus. Mary humbled herself under his authority, and simply held on to her peace, as she waited on the Lord to provide. This is the second key learning point of our lesson today. Pray and wait for the Lord's answer. Expect a miracle. John 2, 5. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Most of us have heard the story of a praying mother with no means to purchase food for her hungry children. Pray and ask God for food, and then, by faith, set the table with dinnerware, so that she and her children would be ready to eat the food that the Lord would be providing. Mary like this praying woman, prepared to receive her miracle. Mary simply teaches us to trust God, and obey God, and then wait for Him to provide. John 2, 6 And there were set there six water pits of stone, after the manner of the funeral fine of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Mark 7, 3. For the Pharisees, and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Jesus noticed that six of the stone water pots used for hand washing contained between 20 and 30 gallons of water with the capacity to be filled with more water to the brim. Some will say that John 2, 6 is symbolic, and that the number 6 represents the number of a man, because God created a man on the sixth day of creation. Some will add that the stone clay pots represent the soul of a man, and that the water represents the Holy Spirit of God filling the soul of a man will the Holy Ghost, after the word of God is administered, and received by the soul of a man, thus purifying the soul of a man from the inside out. Some will interpret this verse differently, and even more symbolically. Jesus needed common containers to fill with the abundance of wine, he would create with his hidden identity, we now know, and recognize as God the creator of all things. Jesus to fulfill his mission on earth had to keep his holy identity as God hidden to some degree, to fulfill his promised covenant to Abraham, the father of faith. John 2, 7 Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pits with water, and they filled them up to the brim. The word of God, Jesus, spoke a command, and the servants obeyed as instructed, and because of Mary's faith in the word of God, the Spirit of God converted the water into wine, just as the Spirit of God moved upon the waters, and created the earth at the creation recorded in Genesis chapter 1. John 2, 8 And he saith unto them, Draw it out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. Psalms 34, 8 O taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Mary's faith in the Son of God caused everyone that wanted a blessing, to receive a miracle blessing, from the Lord. One might say that there was an overflow of blessings present at this wedding banquet, and might add that most of those who received the miracle blessings from God, were completely unaware of the origin of their miracle blessing. Thus Jesus kept hidden from them, his deity as God the creator of all things, including wine. John 2, 9 When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. It is interesting to note that the clay water pots, that the guest might have recognized, because they had used the water in them to wash their hands, were not revealed, or carted around, and served from. The clay pots became a hidden source, of miracle blessings, as they were dipped into, time and time again by the servants, as instructed, and served to the honored waiting banquet guest. Sometimes our miracle blessing is before our very eyes, and we don't recognize it for what it is, a miracle. Don't judge a book by its cover, is a popular, and very wise saying. John 2 10 And saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when many have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. The Lord God of heaven, has kept the good wine in store for his special, and honored guest, who will sit at his table and be blessed.
John 2 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. John concludes and summarizes that all of this that happened at the wedding of Cana, was for the good of the new disciples of Jesus Christ, God's rabbi, teacher preacher from heaven, Mary, the mother already knew and pondered the works of her oldest son, and not his disciples knew that the same God that rained down manna from heaven, also turns water into wine. John 2.12. After this he went down to Capernaum, he, and his mother, and his brethren, and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. Give God the glory, give him the